Yeah, I did drop it. Okay. <laughs> He's letting you down. <laughs> No sound. Yes. 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 Oh, here we go. <laughs> Morning, congregation. Morning. I'm going to just remain seated. I'm going to ask Sean to bring in God's word for us. And while he's doing that this morning, this is the first um, Sunday in Advent, and traditionally in this congregation, the, the children need us in the retelling of the Nativity story. Um, I was driving to church this morning early, and I was listening to the news, and Exactly this day, uh, 50 years ago, was the first heart transplant. Chris Barnard performed the, heart, performed the first heart transplant on the 3rd of December, 1976. And I thought, other than that being an incredible... Uh, 67. No, 67, not 76. Well, 67 was made for me. Yeah, my bad sister. <laughs> and those of you that were listening to my sermon attentively last weekend would have also heard my incorrect mathematical calculation. <laughs> Did you? I'd like to show you up. <laughs> Got you. Um, but I was thinking when uh, the newsreader uh, read this little insert and about this heart transplant, and I thought, you know, isn't it interesting that today is the first Sunday in Advent and how we remember that the birth of Christ into our hearts transforms our lives in so many ways. You know? um, and so maybe there's just a little bit of a, um, a parallel thinking about the heart transplant and, and this first Sunday in Advent and the birth of Christ in, in our lives. So on this first um, Sunday in Advent, we traditionally light the candle of, of hope. Christy, come help me. And ask Christy. I'm going to ask you to wake up. No, no. First of all, wake up and then help me. But um, we remember as we light this candle of hope that God said to Abraham that through him the nations would be blessed and that would bring hope um, to the world. The Old Testament spoke so often of the coming of Christ, um, the Messiah, into the world and the hope that that would bring into the world. And we know that the world needs hope and more than more than so many other things that it needs, it needs a lot of a lot of hope. So I'm going to ask Christy to light the candle of hope for us, and we remember that hope yeah, is like a light. Like a light. Hope is like a light shining in a in a dark place. <laughs> and as we look at this candle of hope, we remember the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. In this season of Advent, we prepare to welcome Jesus Christ, our Messiah. In the season of Advent, we remember that it's a season of promise, a season of hope. And so in our worship this morning, we prepare for the birth of a baby in a dusty, dirty stable in Bethlehem. And we remind ourselves that this child was destined to become the saviour of the world and he will return again. So God of Advent, we journey with you this morning to Bethlehem stable to a newborn king. Our ears are attuned this morning to the songs of the angels. Our eyes alert for Bethlehem star. Would you forgive us though if our journey, in our journey we have been distracted by the tempting offers of the world. Would you take away our selfishness, would you teach us how to love as you loved us, especially during the season of Advent. Take away our sense of pride and teach us humility. Take away our blindness and show us the world through your eyes. Take away our greed during the season and teach us how to give as you gave. And so Lord, we ask that you would keep our hearts aflame with the hope of Christmas and the promise of a Savior. Be born again in us this day, Jesus Christ. Transform our hearts and our minds. Journey with us as, as we go on this journey beginning today towards the stable and your birth. And then we wait, Lord. We wait in hope for the day that you will return to come and judge the world. And you will return in power. And you will return in glory. 
And until then, we will wait. God of Advent, be with us and be with our children this morning as they share the precious story of your birth. In Jesus' name we pray. One day, the shepherds called the lambs together to tell them something special. We are going up to the meadow. There is sweet grass up there which is delicious to eat and lovely to play on. Yippee! 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 yippee, yippee. <laughs> Nick hobbled over to take his place with all the other lambs, but they all turned towards him and started to laugh at him. <laughs> You can't come with us, they said. You are far too slow. We can't wait for you. And then they all said, Go, Go away! away! Go away! Then Nick looked up and saw a shepherd standing in front of him. Damn right, my little lamb. You had better stay behind. The trip is going to be too hard for you. Why don't you go and sleep in the stable? Little Nick felt very sad, and a big tear slipped out of his eye. Then he heard Daniel say, Don't be sad. God has a special plan for you. The two friends walked slowly to the stable together. When they arrived at the stable, they ate some food. They were both tired and lay down on the straw and fell fast asleep. On a dusty road, a young man named Joseph and his pregnant wife Mary were traveling to Bethlehem. Joseph walked around, looking for somewhere to stay. They knocked at the door of every inn and asked if they had any room for him and his wife. But the innkeepers all replied, sorry, no room. Finally, one kind innkeeper replied with an answer that brought joy to their ears. I have no room, but you can stay in my stable. The innkeeper showed Mary and Joseph to the stable. Please join us in singing Away in a Manger. <laughs> soft warm wool and curled up close to the baby to keep him warm. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jes
Loki, little lamb. You are keeping the new king warm. Soon the baby stopped crying and fell fast asleep. Please join us in singing the Calypso Carol. <laughs> Nick lying next to the baby and said to him, Do you know who the baby is? Yes, he does. This is Jesus, the Son of God. Three wise men from the east had seen a bright star in the sky and had followed that star to Bethlehem.
Finally, when all the commotion had died down, Nick looked at the baby. He knew this was a special moment. He also understood why he had been born with a crippled leg. If he had been like all the other lambs, he would have been in the meadows. But because he was so different, he was in the stable, among the first to welcome baby Jesus into the world. Nick turned to Daniel and said, You are right. God does have a special plan. Please join us in singing. Come and join the celebration. special gifts and talents. We pray protection over the lives of these children. We pray, Lord, that as you are born in their hearts and as they grow up and come to face the challenges of this world, that they would always follow that star, that your light would shine in and through them, that they would know that you love them and that they must always put you first in their lives. Thank you, Jesus, that you are alive in their hearts. Thank you for their parents. Would you continue to give them wisdom and courage <coughs> as they raise these children to become men and women of Christ in this world? We thank you for the teachers in the Sunday school who impart the, no the knowledge of your love to these young people. We thank you for your word that is alive and clearly well in their hearts. We thank you that they have shared with us the story of your birth, your coming into this world. Thank you that you two are born in our hearts. <coughs> Would you bless them? Would you protect them? Would you provide for them and their parents? Would you ensure, Lord Jesus, that no harm ever comes upon these children? In your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you. In a sunny valley lives a little man named Nick. He was different to all the other lambs because he was black and not snow white all over. <laughs> he had also been born with one leg that didn't work right, so he always lived when he walked. 